Advanced Web Application TypeScript. So let's start this course with the TypeScript concept. So the TypeScript, pretty similar to JavaScript, it was originally developed by Microsoft, which is strange. Microsoft hasn't been the uh, most uh, web-oriented company, but still they managed to do this thing, which is now used by every web developer. And originally it was developed in the beginning of the last decade, and the version 1.0 was released already 10 years ago, 2014. And all JavaScript programs are valid TypeScript programs, but not vice versa. So if you are writing TypeScript, it's not JavaScript. But if you are writing JavaScript, it's completely TypeScript. So TypeScript adds features to the JavaScript. So there are, for example, this type checking. And browsers do not support TypeScript at all. So when you are um, programming in to the browser, you need to use JavaScript. That's the only thing browsers can read. But when you are actually writing the code, you are doing that in TypeScript. So TypeScript needs to be first transpiled, which can be considered like compiled to JavaScript. Although the process is not a compilation, it's transpiled. So only the source code it's, it is modified to JavaScript. Uh, what kind of features TypeScript will bring us? Well, basically, the, as the name just just it will bring us statically typed language things and it has several data types. So we have booleans, we have numbers, strings, arrays, tuples, enums, unknowns, any, voids, nulls, undefined, never, and objects. So we already know that in, in JavaScript we have booleans, we have numbers, we have strings, arrays, objects, but uh, we didn't have types like any or tuple or never, but now we have them. So in, in the very essence, the difference is this, that in JavaScript we can define let x equals 10. Then we have a variable and we set that its value will be 10. But in TypeScript, you can set let x colon number equals 10. So we are defining that this x variable is exactly a number. It cannot be string, it cannot be object, it will be a number. And luckily, TypeScript can also figure out that let x equals 10 is a number. So when we are uh, assigning some value to the variable, TypeScript automatically uh, sets the type corresponding to the value. So in this case, the x would be number and then you could not assign any more any strings to it. This is, of course, quite easy. So if we are defining that let x its number and its value is 10, then if we are trying to assign a some kind of a string to that variable, that transpile process won't work. And then we can have a, let's say, we have an array of names and its type is string array. That, uh, as we have defined that. And its value here is empty string. Of course, there are functions. So we can uh, define a function called create and it gets a parameter string and it get its uh, return type is also string. These are defined after those columns and in the body of this function we are only adding this string we get as a parameter. We are putting it to uppercase and then concatenate it with this string hello and then we are returning it. And the function parameters return value have the types in this example. We can also give a default parameter so here we are defining that the string if it's omitted then the string would be this name string would be sally and parameters can also have union types which is uh, pretty much like or keyword so we have a function print id and we are defining that the id can be either number or string of course it cannot be both them but 
it, it would be not allowed to be <coughs> object, but it can be number like 42 or string like id dash 42. So after that, this function, this print id, it can only access the id operation available for both number and string. So if we would try to use, for example, this to uppercase method, and we had a number there, we could not use that. So we cannot access the to uppercase uh, method for this ID. Until we use type of, that will give the information that if it's string, then we can use the to uppercase method, which is only provided in string, not in the number. Uh, type aliases and interfaces. So type alias can be used to make the code more readable. Here we are defining that we have this uh, cursor coordinates type which practically is like alias but its name is still type. Someone decided that. And this uh, cursor coordinates it has uh, two values it has uh, x and y they are both numbers well they are coordinates and uh, then there are also interfaces. So we are defining interface person, which has email as a string and age as a number. So now you can see that these are pretty similar things. So the difference is that one can add fields to the interface, but not to the type. So type is immutable. So here we are defining interface again, like a person, but it's like adding this fax to the previews. We can also extend interfaces, which would be probably the best way to do this. This this is only adding the field to the person interface. And generics is also a new thing in, in TypeScript compared to JavaScript. It's a very much used thing in Java, in C++. You can and you pretty much use the generic code. If you, for example, are using array list in Java, then you are defining that this array list is using int type or float type or object or a string type or whatever. So instead of using type any, so this TypeScript has this type any, which means there can be anything, or a specific type like number or string, we can use generics and not type the actual type. So for example, in functions, we could have a function identity. We are defining that uh, it is using a parameter called type parameter type type. So here we have the argument, its type is type and the return values uh, type is also called type. And then this function is only returning the argument that it's getting as a parameter. We do not know what type it is, but when we are calling it, then we can define what type we are uh, using there. And also these generics can be used in classes too. So we can have class generic number which has a num type that is not tied to any real type like number or, or string. And this class only has the zero value, which is then defined. Uh, its type is defined as this num type. There are plenty of other tricks in TypeScript. So we could have literal types. For example, here we have a function print year that can have a accept parameter uh, year that can accept only values 1999, 2000 or 2001. Other values are not accepted. So there are only three possible options. Then there are read only and optional properties. So here we have an interface person, which has this read only email, which is typed string. So you can define the email one time, but after that it cannot be changed. And it is then read only. It's pretty much like constant in a way. Then we have this fax number, it's a string and it's optional. So there is a, this question mark. So you need, don't need to define any value for that. You can leave it empty. It's, a, it's an optional. And how this process is going. So first developers develop their code in TypeScript. So they write, use the types, they are writing the code in TypeScript such as index.com ts file. Uh, Visual Studio Code and others can highlight the code as TypeScript so they are notifying us that okay now you are using type wrongly 
this has already been set as a string type. Now you are trying to put integer there, number there, it's not allowed. Then when your code is uh, like working, then you need to transpile it to JavaScript. Otherwise it won't work in a browser. So we are using this DSC command. And uh, after that, this uh, code.ds is transpiled to code.js. Then the code is deployed to the test product and environment and it can be run. Yeah, that's not that difficult. Uh, of course, more information about TypeScript can be found from the typescriptlang.org, which is the official site. There is very strong documentation. I really recommend that you read it. Not everything, of course, because there is such, such, such much documentation, but this uh, TypeScript in five minutes is a good place to start to understand what we are really talking about. And now let's get to the example. So here we have a completely empty uh, Visual Studio code. Let's start this by uh, adding a new file here. So let's call it, for example, tsdemo.ts. And now we have this kind of a tsdemo. And let, let's put here a let x number 42 console log x. So everything seems to be working. Let's have a x that is some kind of a text. And now Visual Studio Code is underlining this and saying this type string is not assignable to type number. So our editor already knows that this file is in TypeScript and we cannot do things like this. So let's get rid of that. Very good. Now our application should work. As this is now written in a uh, uh, TypeScript or in JavaScript, we need some kind of a way to run it. I have installed some packages. Let's run this without programming it. That's just that I have a Node.js. Let's run with it. Node.js. Okay, it did not work because it is now running JavaScript and our code is written in TypeScript, it did not understand what is this. So there is unexpected token. So first of all, we need to transpile this. So let's open a new terminal. Let's see. Here we have a, this is our file. And if, if you haven't installed TypeScript, then you could have a NPM. So I have installed Node uh, version manager NVM, which then lets me use NPM. And now I could install globally uh, TypeScript. I should have already installed it or something. Yeah, there is a new minor version available. I'm not going to update it right now. So this, this file now should be uh, transpiled. So we have this command TSC. Let's first init this our project. So now it created a TS config JSON file. So that's the config we are using. It's not visible here, but at least let's refresh and now we have it here. Yes, this is now all, all the necessary information here. Now we can just uh, use TSC command and now it's going to transpile us the file. And now we got the TS uh, demo.js and we can then run it with node.js and here we have the uh, answer so it was 42 so uh, was this okay mm, yes it was kind of okay but first of all now we have all the files here in the same directory now in the root directory that's not something that we want let's go to the config file and let's see what what here we have. So first of all, we have a target. So now we are defining that we are using ECMAScript 2016. Okay, it's uh, fine. We could use, let's say, ES5. That would be very old uh, and it would not use the keyword let. It would use us, uh, put us using the var keyword, which is bad JavaScript nowadays. So let's not use this old, but of course we could take the latest so yes next or it should be like this okay this is this is nice and then we should have a 
some kind of directory where we would put this uh, transpiled. So here you have a root directory, so we have a, something else like a output directory. So this sounds good. Let's take this and let's put it to the list. So it's like a distribution, it's distributed there. And this is good. And let's check it this again. Now we are writing a, again this. Now we got a distribution folder and the file is there. Now we can get rid of this. Okay, let's continue with this uh, our code and let's have this x now as full bar. Now we are getting an error because this string is not assignable type. We can still write this TSC. Let's see what happens. So it had this error. So yeah, there is an error. What happened to our file here? Okay, but we still got this. So this is a valid JavaScript, but it was not valid um, TypeScript, but this our transpile process still accepted this. So we have a mistake in our code, but it still goes to the production. Uh, doesn't sound that something that we would like to have. So let's see further what we have here. So we could have here something like no emit on errors. So uh, this uh, maybe we could have a little bit smaller. Now, now I got lost where I was. I no emit on errors. So disable emitting any files if there is a checking error. That is something that we want. So we are not doing this process. Now I can remove this here and try to transpile it again. Now there was an error and no new files was made. So let's remove the error and let's do the transpile process again. Now it was completely okay and we have the file here which is now okay. We can also get rid of these comments if we want. There is a settings for that and such everything you might find something you want to use in some project or or not to use but here are plenty of settings but we do not need to worry about them more this is just fine and of course now you can run this file off here how oh, it was this ds demo and it is producing us 42. Or you can use the uh, uh, Visual Studio Code this one without de debugging if you wish. So now our code is working and we are transpiling it. So let's continue. First of all, let's define my name and its type is string. Then my name would be John Doe. This is fine. Let my age type is number and my age would be 40. I'm not saying it's my age, but it might be something like this. And now we can lock this out. So basically let's just have my name is my, uh, my name and I am my age year years old way too much to write Let's see. So first, let's transpile this and then let's run it. Yes, it is working. So we can also uh, automate this that it's always transpiling the code when we are saving the uh, file, but we will uh, do that later on. Now we are just transpiling it manually all the time. So then there was this uh, keyword type that lets us use type person. 
and this uh, person has a name called uh, it's string h which is of course number is student this is optional variable called boolean uh, typed boolean and then we have a read only id which is number like this and now we can use a, a, a define a person which is typed as this t person this is very good now we know that it has to have these fields so it's missing uh, several types it's missing name missing age and it is also missing this id this is student that is not required so let's have these uh, variables here jane doe age 30 is student true id 1 and we could then log the person out like this so there is this jane doe yeah it seems to be working let's continue so then there was this interface which we can uh, can modify so i person not t so this t person is a, a type but this i person is now uh, interface and here we have we could actually copy paste these so let's see there is a name age is student and this id and once again we do not want to modify this id and then let's define let uh, person 2 so we had here the person 1 let's have it uh, like a person 1 and then we have a person 2 which is made from this interface so the diff here we have a difference so when we are making this type then we have an equal sign here in a sense but here we do not have it it's a bit different but of course when we are actually creating the uh, variable the object then we are using this equals mark let's have this person and once again now the typescript wants this person to have this name age and id and uh, this guy is named uh, jack doe which age is 25 his student false so he is not student and his id is 2 and we can of course now log out how is this student going so these are like a almost the same but still again they are not the same so let's expand this extend this interface so we can have a interface called student which, which then extends this person so this is like we have a class and then we have an inheritance and we are adding something but of course this is just an interface not a class but pretty much the same thing we have in for example java so if we have a student we could then have a course and that would be string and then let's uh, define a student no is student but student like this and its type is this i student and then we need to create it and once again we need to have these variables here so we have a julian doe big family 21 and of course this one is student true and the id would be three and now we are still missing one so uh, this property course is missing let's add that 
or actually this um, this course is but let's have a major here so what kind of a major this student has and it would be software engineering like this and now we can log this student let's see what happens yes there is this julia doe now created and she has a major in software engineering then i was mentioning these functions so javascript has functions of course but uh, they did not have the type so we are just having this greeting method string and this is also a returning string and now the function whose declaration type is neither undefined void or any must return value so already visual studio code is highlighting this that saying that this function needs to return something so let's return something hello name like this and guess what we can now call this function greet and have a, some kind of a name there let's have a world and now we can test it it should print us hello world and it did very good so then there was this optional type so let optional so wh what is this what can it be it could be string it could be number or it could be null so then we can define that this optional equals hello it is accepted as this this hello is a string and we can then log this optional then we can define it again now it's a number and once again we can uh, log it and we could even then put it, it as a null so it could not be uh, used anymore all it would be used but it would be a null so let's see so in yeah, first it's a string hello then it's a number and in final it is null we could build these kind of variables that have a different types it could have different types in some cases they are very useful but uh, the idea of have a static typing is that you really have one type per uh, variable but in some cases there there could be something so if we would have a type of any here uh, this would still be okay yes but of course now we are just completely losing the purpose of typescript so let's get back to this string number now and then uh, finally some words about these generics so let's build a uh, generic function so we have some type usually it is called like t uh, as a type and it, we have a, this, this is parameter and its type is this t so our, that, that this function is we are not returning anything or we are not defining the return type actually let's put it so that it's and once again now we need to define that this function is returning something so what would be return we are just returning that this parameter param is type of and then we are just printing the type no type of param 
like this. So now I clearly made a mistake. So this uh, this uh, return is now saying that string is not assignable to type t. So this t could be anything. So if we had uh, for example object here would be returning object no because we are returning a string so this has to be string of course now it's working we are returning string and now we could lock few lines so let's call this generic function uh, let's call it with a string hello and we can call it with a number or we could call it with a boolean true hard word or we could have a object there so let's put an empty object and let's see what happens so the first time we are calling it it says it the param type is string correct then it's number correct boolean correct object correct so yes this is how we have the we would use the same function but uh, with different parameter types so this function would work of course without any of these like this now it would work now it would be like a, a javascript version and now yeah we are not using any any type so it would be like this and it would work but then we would lose the ability to have these specific types instead of any type now although we can have the here any type we are still always knowing what is the type because it's it has to be the same it has to be always the t so but if, if you have learned this in in java or c++ then it's uh, pretty much the same here in uh, here in JavaScript or, or TypeScript. So the key is to avoid the use of uh, any type, which is bad. So let's make a type called generic. Generic. It has some data. Value equals this data and uh, is error is boolean then we make a const response uh, which type is now this t generic and we add here the correct type so status equals number and message equal uh, it is typed string and here we then set the value so now this value value has to be the same type and this here the type is like this so this kind of a thing has to be so now we can set the status is 200 and the message the message is uh, success and now there is still some kind of error so this is error is missing it has to be so is error is false why why we have this response and why there are status and messages this is because when we are sending some kind of a message from server to client it's probably providing us some kind of a status and some kind of a message so here the uh, response would be 200 it's http code and the message would be success and there would be no errors and this this gap it could be then use this d generic here as a type and now this was kind of long code eight lines of code so there is a way to shorten this a bit so let's define this t uh, response value which is uh, this t generic and now we are defining that it has a uh, this status 
and message and then we can have a const response to uh, the response value and then the actual content which, which would be for example 404 which is not found so now it's a uh, it's a bit different so we could use this kind of a shortening here so uh yeah let's see if this is even working still yeah everything is working and yeah so we could of course log the <coughs> response to well it's it's not that useful but it could give us some kind of information that there is no error but the message is is not found so in a, in a sense it's is, is it an error or not let's say it it is it is an error so now the error has been no there is an error yes so this is how how typescript is used in in practice now we wrote few lines of code and everything seems to be working we transpiled it to the javascript and this is the javascript that is then being run so where where to use this typescript so besides simple application typescript can be of course used with node.js and express and react we are talking about more these and later on in this course and the bigger your project is the more important is to get rid of those stupid type errors so your program is not working because you are putting a number to a variable that has should be a string or you are putting a string when you are expected to have an object there so these are the stupid errors but now typescript allows you to use types and thus you won't get these stupid errors anymore use typescript so as a conclusion uh, nowadays all the bigger web applications are written in typescript because it is uh, so useful, you get rid of uh, those type errors and such. It makes the coding more safe when you have a statically typed language. Of course, there is this downside that you need to transpile the whole uh, code. In a large project, it will take some time, but uh, in the end, this is still automated and you do not need to worry about that that much.